How is it going everyone? Today I'm starting a new project, Merkava Mark 3 version D. It's a Manx kit, so I hope it will be quite solid. Before I'm gonna cut some plastic, let me just give you some short tongue description and a bit of its history. The Merkava Mark 3 main battle tank is a successor to the Mark 2. First production tanks entered service with Israel Defense Forces in 1990. Production ceased in 2003 and a total of 780 of these tanks were built. It's still widely used by the IDF alongside the newer Merkava Mark IV. The Merkava Mark III has the same layout as its predecessors. It reflects the unique requirements of Israeli Ministry of Defense. This tank has improved armor protection, firepower and mobility. Protection of this main battle tank was improved by adding passive modular armor. Damaged modules can be easily replaced in field conditions. Such armor can also be constantly upgraded when more advanced modules are available. This MBT can also be fitted with explosive reactive armor blocks. Merkava Mark III is also fitted with a laser warning system. It's worth mentioning that unlike the others, Merkava has a front-mounted engine for better crew protection. Vehicle can be fitted with Trophy Active Protection System. The Merkava Mark III is fitted with a fully stabilized 120mm smoothbore gun locally developed by Israel Military Industries. This gun can fire all standard NATO 120mm munitions. It can also fire gun-launched Lahat anti-tank guided missiles in the same manner as ordinary projectiles. Vehicle carries 50 rounds for the main gun, ammunition is stored in separate containers. The tank is fitted with a new fire control system with automatic target tracking. Secondary armament consists of three 7.62mm machine guns, Sometimes the Mark III can be seen fitted with ranging 12.7mm machine guns. This MBT is also fitted with remotely controlled 60mm mortar, which is used to fire illumination and fragmentation rounds. The Merkava Mark III has a crew of 4, including commander, gunner, loader and driver. It's worth mentioning that the Merkava Mark III has a unique feature and can carry up to 10 troops when ammunition is unloaded. Troops enter and leave the vehicle through the rear door. The vehicle is powered by a Continental diesel engine developing 1200 horsepower. Power to weight ratio of this tank is rather poor due to excessive weight which limits the tank's mobility. Variants of the Merkava Mark III include the Merkava Mark IIA, IIB and IID. So I started with the boring part, cleaning and sanding all the wheel parts. There are two types of wheels in the kit, one all steel type and second rubber type. I decided to make most of the wheels with rubber, only two or three will be completely rubberless. While assembling the wheels, I installed rubber poly caps inside to make the wheels movable. I'm not sure if I want the wheels to move in the future, but for now I wanted to have this opportunity. The drive sprockets were also assembled and I started to mount chassis parts. The 
Some of them need small file corrections. I also had to enlarge a few holes, but most of work at this stage was rather smooth. In the case of the Merkava, I decided to make it, as they say, straight out of the box, so without any photo edge plates or suspension springs. It was not an easy decision considering that I really like this type of add-ons. However, I cannot promise you that I will not use a piece of wire or copper sheet if I think it's necessary. Now a pro tip, how to solve the problem with picking up residual glue from the Tamiya extra tin bottle. As you probably know, the brush doesn't reach the bottom. To my surprise, the Tamiya company predicted this problem. The brush can be easily extended by pulling its tip. Am I the only one who hasn't known it so far? Anyway, I hope someone will find this tip useful. After finishing with some chassis parts, it's time to prepare the tank suspension. The Merkava Mark III differs from its previous versions, among other things, with its suspension. It can be said that this is a kind of creative development of the Christie suspension. The suspension is located entirely outside the hull. Instead of trolleys, we have wishbones with spring shock absorbers. It's lighter than the previous solution and provides better characteristics than the Merkava Mark I and Mark II suspensions. As you can see, the shock absorbers need a lot of cleaning. The process is quite time consuming. You have to be careful not to damage the part. After cleaning it like this, I smoothed the surface with extra tin glue. It's not perfect, but for sure looks better than before. Just 11 more, and you know what's the most exciting about it? When fully assembled, they will be almost invisible. When pasting the suspension elements, it's a good idea to temporarily mount the wheels. 
They have different diameters so we need to properly adjust the suspension before gluing so that all wheels touch the ground. Then I installed the rear door. It's welded from armor plates which are separated by an air chamber and creates spatial armor. As you can see it can be mounted as movable door, but I think I will close it forever with extra tin glue. Last elements today, rear baskets. Assembling them is not very easy, as the parts are quite fragile and the construction is not very solid. That's it for today, I know that the effect is not overwhelming yet, but the preparation of wheels and suspension elements was very time consuming. I hope there will be a bit more to come in the next episodes. Looking at the chassis, I realized that it would be quite a big model. Anyway, I'm looking forward to continuing the Merkava build, especially the painting and weathering phase. If you are also interested, please consider subscribing to the channel and you will certainly not miss the next episodes. Stay healthy, stay strong and see you soon, bye!